Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and today we're going to be replacing the trim on my nasty old transom. So here's what I'm working on today. My old transom uh, had some holes in it that I need to fill in, and it had the aluminum trim that was all bent up, was letting a lot of water in, and wasn't holding on very securely. A lot of the rivets and everything like that were messed up. So I have removed big sections of that trim, and I'm gonna replace it with new trim, gonna put it on more securely, gonna seal it off, and we're going to firm up this transom. So this is not state-of-the-art repair. This is not restoring this boat for 50 more years of use. This is making my boat so that this doesn't rot anymore and gets me through this season safely. And then we'll reassess this at another point in time in the future. So let's get started. Let me show you some of the things that I'm gonna be using today. So here's some of the hardware that I'm gonna need for this project. I've decided to reuse the bolts that held on the kicker motor. And these are them. And so those were special, I guess, welded up stainless washers that they had. And uh, I'm going to put the hardware back through there and seal that off correctly. These are four new stainless steel bolts, nuts, and stainless washers that are going to go through the uh, transom brackets. Here's some spare washers, and here's a 20-pack of 2-inch stainless screws and a 25-pack of 1-inch stainless screws. And here is my 8-foot long piece of uh, bent aluminum, and it is 2-inch uh, by, uh, it says 2-inch by 1 16th by 96 millimeters. Basically, it's 2 inches by 2 inch. It's a 16th of an inch thick angle aluminum. This is actually heavier gauge aluminum than the aluminum that I took off. And the aluminum that I took off was two inches, but only about an inch and a half. So I'm putting larger aluminum on. My thinking is that this reason I bought an eight foot piece is so here's the first piece. And let's just pretend this is our second piece here, right? A little bit of a gap. And then that'll straighten out to there. And the next piece, like that. And our next piece. Oh, see, that's nice. That's one cut if I do it right, like that. And then that leaves me this section here as some extra. And my thought is I'm going to cut this into two chunks and I'm going to use this to reinforce. So let me show you what we're doing here at the transom. So I'm going to leave this on. I took off the piece of aluminum that went down here. And then I took off the piece that went here and went here. I'm leaving it on where the motor is, over here, where my engine, apologize, where my engine is. So there's my chickens. This is who makes all the noise while I'm trying to talk and work. All right, ladies, knock it off. Let me show you the tools that we're gonna to be using today. I tried to get out everything that I need. I don't know if I succeeded or not. So I actually set myself up a nice little workbench out here. And I have gloves, since I'll be working with sharp metal. A marker and a pencil to mark the aluminum and if I need to measure anything. A hacksaw, because I think I'm going to be cutting this stuff manually. A file to smooth off the edges after I cut. Some pliers and a rubber hammer to uh, shape the metal, where I have to bend it in a little tighter and get the corners. And then I got a scraper and a scrub brush, magic eraser and a rag, and some acetone for prepping my surfaces, rubber gloves, and 4200 sealant. The reason I'm going to use 4200 is it's supposed to be flexible. 
It bonds aluminum and fiberglass and it's supposed to remain flexible. So the hope is that putting that underneath of the edge of the aluminum when we put it all together will make a good secure bond. Then we've got my impact drill, my drill bits, and my screwdriver to put in all the uh, screws. This bucket is my trash and tool hauling bucket. So hopefully that's everything that I need to do this project. I have a feeling I'll be running back and forth to the garage and to my toolbox for a couple other things along the way. But I wanted to try to have a plan. So I took off this section and this section on both sides. Here's where the kicker motor was. Here's the old bolts over here for the kicker motor. And here's the bolts through here. Because this transom is a little bit squishy, I don't know if you can see that, I'm concerned but I'm not gonna replace the whole transom. So the way I wanna approach this is I'm gonna put my new bracket on, which will be two inches and two inches. So it'll go down about where the old one was and farther over up here. I want to uh, seal this and have that on there. And then in this area right here, I'm gonna put these bolts back through. So where my two bolt holes are, I'm going to put sealer on, put those bolts back in, and put them here, and that'll help hold this tight. These spots right through here, I'm going to put a second, my plan is to put a second bracket over top of it on this side, and then I'll use those smaller bolts to hold all of this together here. This will help strengthen up the transom a little bit. Going to do the same thing on this side. So we'll build a section that goes down here, a piece that goes here and here, reinforce it with another bracket on this side, and run two screws through here. This side is more solid because it has whatever this is. I don't know if this is a flagpole mount or an antenna mount or what this was. But this is mounted on here, holding this part over here kind of solid, even though my wood here is kind of sketchy. My thought is this just gets us through for another year or two. Then we decide what we're going to do with the boat after that. So I'll be cleaning all of this surface up here, prepping it for new, new uh, sealing along the top edge and this side. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to rough out what these brackets are going to look like on our new piece of aluminum here. So we're going to take this piece and let's uh, flatten this back out again. Make it even with the edge there. This is the notch where it bends, and apparently at the end, the way it's cut away is like that. So this is piece number one. Piece number two, my angle is pretty similar. Let's try this. This could be even better. Now I'm also going to write a number two on here 
So that way I know this is piece number two. I'm gonna write number one on this, so I know this is piece number one. One and two are done. Piece number three. And finally, piece number four. Straighten that out. Hmm. That's okay, can't all work exactly how I'd like it to. One of the things somebody said to me is they said uh, that maybe I would want to rough cut this stuff out and do it better as I go. And I may just do it that way. Number four, and this is number four. Let's just go for it. What do we got to lose, right? Oh, this is a lovely sound. Two hours later. Okay, so here's what we're getting ready to do. We're getting ready to put the pieces on here. So we're gonna try our first one. We gotta put this metal piece on right here. But first I'm gonna put the screw in that goes here. So that should be fun. So we've got our rag. And I've got my, I, uh, was using acetone to prep the surface here. And when I used the acetone to prep the surface, it ate right through my, destroyed my latex gloves. So these are the Mechanics Black Nitrile gloves. We got our marine adhesive right here. And we've got our big flat washer and our bolt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick this on the inside of here with our bolt, let me grab the bolt. Because the first part I'm gonna attach is right here. I'm gonna draw this in so that way it doesn't move after I've uh, put on the other stuff. So let's run some of this. I've never used 4200 before. So let's see how it flows. Well, right now it seems to flow really, really slowly. Here we go. Finally getting some to come out here. So what I want to do is I want to lay a nice bead of it around here. And then I'm also going to put it all over the shaft of the bolt.
And then we're going to stick this through the hole. And I'm going to wipe this off on a rag. If you've ever caulked a bathtub, this is just as much fun. And we've got our outer nuts and washers right here. I'll be putting the 4200 on them as well. Uh, first, I'm going to inject a little bit more inside here. Just to make sure we're nicely sealing. And we're going to put a bunch, I'm sticking it in this bolt hole right here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but where the bolt comes out. And then we're going to put a bead of it around here. And when I stick on all my washers, it should squish a little bit of it out. Now, I'm really not worried about this looking pretty. I am mostly worried about this holding together. Let's see, did I do it the right way? I did. Hey. I'm worried about it holding together and sealing this transom. That's what's important to me. And there we go. That looks quite nice, actually. Set these over on the table. Yep, that has a nice seal. All right, so that's holding this part pretty steady now. So the first piece I want to fit is actually one of the hardest. I have no idea how I'm going to get screws or rivets into that side right there, but this is where we're going right here. So. One of the things I decided to do was take a pencil and I'm going to draw around the outside edge here so I can see how far out I can run a caulk bead. And there we go. There's where I can seal. We run a bead of sealer all around here stick the piece of metal on, and then start uh, screwing some stainless steel screws into there with a little blob of this at each screw point. So let's just go for it. I want to cut this tip a little bit bigger. Maybe I need to puncture the tube a little better. All right, let's see what happens. So here's my thought, is if I dry fit this, and we get goopy everywhere, that's a good sign, right? So, test fit. 
So we didn't get any goop on here. Got just a little bit there. And on the top, we did pretty good. So we need a lot more. <laughs> So, please don't try this at home. This is not a suitable repair for your transom. This is basically me trying to get this boat through one more season. Next year I'll be sitting here either scraping all this out or I'll be riding around in a different boat. All right. Test fit. Second attempt. And there we go. Okay, so here's how I see this working. Stay, stay, stay. <laughs> It didn't stay, did it? All right. So I got one screw. So I'm going to try putting a screw in, see how it holds. A smart man would have brought two power tools with him, but I'm not a smart man. That feels like it's holding on to something. I like that. Now what's interesting is when I originally was playing with this, this piece down here fit up next to the engine, not, not laying on top of the engine like it's doing right now. There we go. All right, so here's a close-up look of some of the stuff I put on. My uh, tube of 4200 kind of ran out, so I didn't get these some of these screws sealed off. And yes, I have a broken off screw that I need to pull out. I need to fill in that hole. Um, and I need to seal some hideaway areas and I might put another bead just along the outside edge just to do it but this is a huge improvement over what we had before here's the other side so compared to what we had on here before the old cap didn't even cover half of the uh, top of the transom and so that seam here that's where a lot of water came in so I'm covering more of it now I've got new goop underneath there and I actually may still even wrap this side on the top here uh, I haven't decided whether or not I'm doing that yet but I've run out of 4200 and getting tired and uh, I got this all on so I'll probably get another tube of 4200 and at the very least seal up this outside edge here. Just run a bead along all the edges. And uh, we'll take it from there. So I hope you got something out of today's video. I uh, hope you at least enjoyed watching it. Um, you know, I'm learning as I go. I had never worked with 4200 before. I'd never cut my own aluminum transom cap before, um, but I don't recommend this as a permanent solution. If you've got a bad transom and an old boat, this is not, this is not the fix long term. The fix is replacing your transom and putting some new uh, kusa board or some wood in there. This is just me fixing it up to get me through another year uh, and to see how this goes. Uh, I, I think it's all it's all a learning experience and, and I'm okay with that because this is a cheap old boat and that's kind of what I bought it for so um, you know 
we fixed it up. And what would be really great is to be sitting here in October going, you know what, this is still in pretty good shape. I'm gonna run through one more year like this. But if that's not the case, that's not the case. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, if you did, hit the old like button. Uh, if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe link and ring the bell so that way you get notified whenever I come out with a new video. And please feel free to comment below. Tell me that I'm a big idiot because this is not a good thing to do or say, yes, I did the same thing on my boat five years ago and I've been having a great old time with it. Or I learned something today. Thanks, Wayne. I don't care either way. I'm just having fun. And I hope this was at least entertaining for you. That's it for now. Ugh. Oof.